Did Vladimir Putin just show the world that Jesus is a black man? hello my viewers and welcome back to my channel subscribe like and don't forget to share your comments in the comment section down below now today we take a look at the provoking discussion surrounding the representation of jesus christ in this video vladimir putin just shows the world that jesus is a black man and to back this up another man shares jewish scholars admitting jewish blackness now this is not something black people don't know this assertion is, is not new to black communities who have long recognized and celebrated jesus blackness however it confronts a pervasive narrative perpetuated by palm color centric interpretations of history and religion so join me as we explore the significance of this assertion and examine the historical and cultural context behind the portrayal of jesus as palm color challenging mainstream perceptions and reclaiming representation for marginalized communities check out these videos i will be right back somebody explain to me why you get booked like icons where older pictures of biblical narratives older paintings i should say depict the israelites and the angels as black people this is putin knows something apparently the rest of the world knows something this article is from nd mdpi.com it's called the jewish blackness in one of the previous videos i did i spoke about how these people got books in their own books that don't even have authors but they will pass on from family to family and friends to friends they have this history but here you have this guy from tel aviv that wants to reconsider the self-admitted widely accepted jewish blackness in history so let's read what it says. It says the notion that in previous centuries, Jews were considered to be black or seen as blacks has gained broad acceptance in scholarly discourse on the Jewish body since the early 1990s. So they're telling you <laughs> they know. The present article considers the notion analytically, analytically, and then examines some of the evidence provided to support it. Much of this evidence does not stand critical examination. Therefore, arguably, the notion of Jewish blackness should be reconsidered. So he's saying that he's saying that he's smarter than all these guys, than all these other scholars, and that he, the, he, his guy's aim is to destroy this notion that historically Jews are black. So they're fighting each other. It says, the notion of the blackness of the Jews or Jewish blackness has become commonplace in scholarly discourse. Scholarly now. Scholarly. You know, the head honchos, the guys with all the degrees, the guys with the big brains. Yeah, those guys. They, they sit around and they talk about you. Going back to the path-breaking work of Sandra L. Gilman in the late 1980s, scholars often assert that a strong European tradition dating back to the Middle Ages sustained that the Jews are black. I just showed you the pictures, the paintings. That's why. But, 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 but before you get too happy, I'm going to keep going down the rabbit hole. And I'm glad that a lot of black and Hispanic Na Native Americans are coming to the realization of who they are. But here's a problem, y'all. A lot of y'all are coming to this knowledge. Here's a problem. You, you're the ones who put them on the cross. So yeah, we're getting all happy that we're coming to the realization of who we are. But you, him, you want to know why we got historically? You want to know why we got put into slavery? Because we put the Son of God up on that cross. We hung him first. We want to get mad at people, but we're the same ones that were the first sellouts and put him on the cross we we told up man i got a whisper about it <laughs> you know the man equations we were the first sellers our daddies was we sold him out first and now it's come back full circle historically and now we're the ones persecuted now we're the ones are now we're the ones trampled you know why this is matthew 27 and verse 25 where, where 24 actually said but rather a tumult was made he took water and washed his hands before the multitude saying i am innocent of the blood of this just person see ye to it then answered all the people all the people the jews black people when i say black people i'm talking about you latinos too then answered all the people and said his blood be on us and on our children yeah your daddy said that 
Your forefather said that. The guilt of Christ has been put on us. That's why we go what we go through. And each and every one of us. Yeah, God has a promise to his people. But the gospel is still the gospel. Acts chapter 529. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew. Y'all slew him. And he, him had God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. You're not going to get a, a free ride out of here until you acknowledge what your fathers did and how every day when you don't repent, you're putting that man on the cross. You're still guilty of what your fathers are guilty of. And God is going to require it of you. All of you lukewarm Christians as well, taking advantage of grace. You black Hispanic and Native Americans, you can't be proud about, oh yeah, we finding out we're the real people when the greater responsibility now falls on us to be that example. You want to talk about, yeah, we're the gods, but you're not acting like gods. You're not cleaving to your father. You're not asking for repentance for putting him on the cross for how you live. You're not asking, drawing near unto him, asking for the Holy Spirit. You think you're about to get us free ride out of here? Nah. You're going to get the same punishment as the same people that you hate because they oppress you. Now get right. And I'm also speaking to you, a lot of you big mouth Israelites who you want to be out here yelling about commandments and everything else, but you don't really believe the Messiah. You're Antichrist. You twist his word. You have a zeal, but not according to knowledge. And now you want to use this opportunity to devour God's flock just because you came upon some little bit of history. You got it coming too. You're the main ones who put him on the cross. When they heard that, they were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay them. I already know what it is. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. I'm so happy that I have your attention now. Did y'all know that over there in Putin and them unlocked a vault, right? They unlocked a vault of this. This is supposed to be Jesus in them. I don't see nobody on this side of the app talking about it. Maybe somebody else on the other side of the app and it just ain't reached me yet. But I found this out about two or three days ago and nobody's talking about it. Right? Like these are all of the artifacts in Moscow that they uncovered out of the vault and now they're on display for people to go look at in Moscow. I have not seen anybody talk about it. Why? Because it confirms we've been telling y'all the man that America has told y'all to worship ain't it's like y'all magically don't know the scripture where it described Jesus saying he had olive skin and hair of wool. I don't know a Google document that has olive skin. Okay. I don't, I don't know none of them that look like that. I, I don't even know none that have hair like wool. Maybe it's super curly, but it ain't like wool. Mm, mm, mm. Wool has a completely different feel to it. I should know. I have 4 C hair. Okay, you know, I'm very, very familiar with the texture of animals and their hair. Okay, without a doubt, they have a great importance in the fundamental recognition in Artisha because the icons represent for Artisha with the pyramids represent for Egypt or the temples of the Greeks. The exhibition shows icons ranging from the 15th century until the early 20th century. It's a rare opportunity to see the religious soul of Artusha. Now, there has been so much debate going on around the world, bestowed by the unveiling of these biblical icons. Some tend to think that the icons have blackened over time and due to age, while others say that the blackness of the icons has nothing to do with age, but are a measure of accuracy meant to depict the actual color of the skins of the people painted because they were black people, says Robert Rubin. Why didn't their clothes change? to black in those paintings or all of the paintings the true israelites were black-skinned people not palm color people likewise the ancient egyptians the richard structure in mauritania is also the locations of atlantis artisans did not change their paintings just as other countries did they simply kept the true painting and iconography look up ancient maps and you will see that the kingdom of judah was later located in west africa the jewish nation Destroyed by Titus, millions of Jews fled into Africa. They ended up in the west of Africa. From there, they were sold as slaves to almost every part of the world. Do you think the hatred for black people is just normal or a coincidence? No, it was because the Israelis did not keep the commandments of God. Moses informed them of the blessings and curses, as we can see in the Bible in the book of Deuteronomy. God told them they would lose that land to people whom they did not know if they disobeyed him. The hatred for the black children of Ham and Sham is because the children of Sham have mixed up with the children of Ham. 
they are both black people but the prime target of this hate is actually shem shem is being punished for his disobedience of god Another insightful one from Johnson says, cause black people were the people in the Bible that the Americans turned palm color when they told the stories to us. But our Tushans didn't get the memo. They went off the real history. Songs of Solomon chapter 1 verse 5, Revelations 1 verse 15. Go check it out. It is in the text. It's not because of a kind of anything else these people are talking about. In that case, the whole picture would be black, not just the face and the hands. They were meant to be black because they were black people. Now, this great USA is also a deceiver. And so many people inherit the wrong lesson from their great grandparents and their parents to the point where it's so deep that the lie was made true when the real answer is really just right there. But you never look because why would you? The Artishan's unveiling didn't stop there. Artisha continues with its biblical historical revelations with President Putin at the foremost front, championing the course. Artisha has opened its sailors to reveal the remarkable painting of Jesus dating back to the 1400s. Father Vladimir Ivonov, this is a book that is highly converted by different circles because it has the black icons. It has the history of black people in places like Artisha and Italy, in places all over Europe. Now, this book can range from $1,300 to $3,000, so it's not an easy book to get. This book has a lot of interesting depictions in it, a lot of them pertaining to the Bible, like the transfiguration of Christ. And you can see that it's black people in caves, I believe. It's black people in the pictures, and this is knowledge that escapes black people here in America. It's definitely something that we would never see or never hear about in the educational system. Now, the portrayal of Jesus as a palm color man has not only influenced religious iconography, but has also shaped societal attitudes and perceptions regarding race. Now, this palm color wash depiction has been used to justify systems of oppression and discrimination, perpetuating harmful stereotypes and reinforcing racial hierarchies. For centuries, the image of a palm color Jesus has been weaponized to justify colonialism, slavery, and other forms of exploitation. European explorers and missionaries use the image of a palm color savior to justify their conquest and conversions, often forcibly imposing their beliefs and values on indigenous people around the world. Moreover, the palm color washing of Jesus' image has had profound implications for the self-esteem and identity of people of color and black people, particularly those within Christian communities. Now, seeing a palm color Jesus depicted as the epitome of divinity and holiness can lead to feelings of inferiority and alienation among individuals whose racial and cultural identities have been marginalized or erased. The perpetuation of the palm color Jesus narrative has contributed to the erasure of black and brown voices within Christianity. The contributions of African theologians, scholars, and religious leaders have often been overlooked or downplayed in favor of Eurocentric interpretations of the faith, further marginalizing people of color and black people within religion religious institutions. The palm color washing of Jesus image saves as a reminder of the ongoing legacy of colonialism and imperialism in shaping global power dynamics by centering palm coloredness as the standard of beauty goodness and divinity colonial powers have reinforced systems of oppression that continue to perpetuate inequality and injustice today recognizing jesus as a black man challenges us to confront the ways in which race intersects with religion power and privilege it calls upon us to deconstruct and dismantle the ws ideologies that have permitted our cultural institutions and to to embrace a more inclusive and equitable vision of spiritually and faith. Now, the recognition of Jesus as a black man challenges not only traditional depictions of religious iconography, but also confronts deeply ingrained cultural biases and historical distortions. What makes this revelation particularly striking is the acknowledgement that even within palm color communities, there exists an awareness of Jesus's true racial identity. It's no secret that throughout history, European powers 
powers have exploited and oppressed black people and people of color, often justifying their actions through the lens of Christianity. The portrayal of Jesus as a palm color man served to reinforce notions of European superiority and divine sanction for imperial conquest. However, the irony lies in the fact that many palm color individuals themselves are aware of the historical and geographical context surrounding Jesus' life. Palm color scholars and theologians have long recognized the likelihood that Jesus, as a Jew living in ancient Judea, would have had features and characteristics more closely aligned with those of the local population, which were likely black or brown. Historical evidence and anthropological studies further support this understanding, suggesting that the palm color washing of Jesus' image was a deliberate act to reinforce WS and colonial domination. Moreover, the acknowledgement of Jesus' blackness by palm color individuals underscores the extent to which racialized interpretations of Christianity have been used to uphold systems of power and privilege. Despite this awareness, the perpetuation of the palm color Jesus narrative persists, serving as a testament to the enduring legacy of colonialism and cultural imperialism. We have come to the end of the video. Share your thoughts in the comment section. Thank you for watching and see you in my next video.